Today I want to talk about optimizing your Apple Time Capsule for Xbox Live and Xbox One. Recently I've had a lot of troubles using Halo Master Chief Collection uh, and Destiny. Um, they seem to have slightly different implementations of networking in these games, but uh, anyway I wanted to try and get Halo and Destiny to work properly. To start off with Go ahead and open your airport utility on your Mac, or if you've downloaded it for your PC, you can do that as well. Click on your time capsule and click edit. I have an Apple time capsule 4, so my uh, variation of settings is going to be slightly different than yours. So now that you're in your base station, uh, you can look at your first tab here. Uh, this is important. This is something that a lot of people don't know about out on the internet, but this is actually key to getting a good setup. Make sure your back to my Mac is shut off in your time capsule. In addition, in your iCloud settings, make sure back to my Mac is turned off. And what this is going to do, uh, this is going to prevent you from your computer and Xbox Live interfering with port settings. Back to my Mac uses port 500 to be able to uh, do your, your uh, back to my Mac service over the internet. In addition, Xbox Live uses port 500, so you can see the conflict. Next, go to the internet tab. On this tab, you can see that I have uh, my DHCP set up on my time capsule. What that means is my particular modem is not going to provide network addresses to my Xbox and other devices on the network. My time capsule will actually do that. You can have your gateway provide the network addresses to your Xbox and that might actually be worth a try. Um, that might change your port forwarding settings though and may not make this video applicable. On your internet tab, go into internet options. To configure IPv6, make sure it's set to automatically and set the mode to native. Uh, again, this is just for IPv6, so if your provider doesn't provide IPv6, this won't be applicable. Make sure your enable IPv6 connection sharing is on and that's going to allow your Xbox to get an IPv6 address. Go ahead and click Save. In my case, Cancel because the settings are already in there. Go to Wireless. Click on Wireless Options. Because of my elongated apartment, I've turned, down, turned off the 5 gigahertz network because um, I can't get a strong signal in many parts of my apartment. And I've also set the channels to automatic, so if somebody else in your neighborhood or your building is using Wi-Fi, these settings will help you, um, your time capsule, adjust so that you're getting the best signal possible at all times. Now for network. To do the port forwarding for your Xbox, I recommend setting up a DHCP reservation. What this is going to do is this going to make sure that you have the same address at all times for your Xbox. It's a little easier than going in and entering the settings manually. I've set my Xbox to the name Xbone. It's easy to type out. And I've arbitrarily given my Xbox the 10.0.1.9 address. Now, the way the time capsule identifies which hardware you are giving the address to is by MAC address. And you can go into your settings, and I believe it's network settings on your Xbox One, and um, get this address that you'll type in here. It's very easy to make a typo, so make sure that you get the right address so that uh, this port forwarding will work properly. And now it's time to enter the port settings for your Xbox One. These settings can both be had from the support.xbox.com address. I will include the URL in my notes for this YouTube video. Basically, you're going to want to hit the plus sign. You're going to want to include in a, a description of the port that you're forwarding. I like to do, for example, 88. 
uh, let's see, 88 UDP. That way you know exactly what it's for. This is assuming that you're only doing port forwarding for your Xbox. Now, because it's UDP, you're going to type in 88 for the public port. You're going to do 88 for the private, and you're going to leave the TCP uh, settings at default since you are only trying to do 88 for UDP. As you can see, I already have all of these in here. This is what a um, description and what the ports look like for when you're doing TCP and UDP. I've set the private address, of course, to the reservation that I created for the Xbox One. Now, remember, Xbox Live uses port 500 on UDP. This is why we turned off the back to my Mac earlier, because we are assigning, we're forwarding this port for the IP address that your Xbox has. All right, a couple more things. Timed access control. I like this setting because basically I have all of my MAC addresses for all of my hardware input in here. And so if the time capsule doesn't recognize some hardware, even if they have your Wi-Fi password, it's not going to allow that person to connect to your network. A little bit of security on your network is going to prevent people from accessing your network and eating up your bandwidth, which, again, affects Xbox Live. In addition, I would be certain to include encryption on your Wi-Fi network. WPA2 Personal is going to be the most secure. Now, for network options, this is where it gets a little bit more nitty and gritty. Actually, there's an error in mine, but I'm going to turn that off. Um, enabling NAT PMP will allow ports to automatically be mapped on your network, but because the Xbox is not compatible, it's not going to work for the Xbox necessarily. In here, you're also going to want to uh, block incoming IPv6 connections. That's a firewall type function that's going to prevent people from getting on your network um, and leaving it open for people to do that. You do want to make sure that you're allowing Teredo tunnels. That's very important for Xbox Live. That's going to allow the IPv6 tunneling that um, provides you the enhanced functionality of IPv6 on Xbox Live. Again, you don't want the default host to be set up um, for the Xbox because that's not going to map your ports like you want. Um, these two functions are analogous to the port forwarding that you're doing, but in general, it's not going to help for you to do the three functions all at once. You want to choose one, and in my experience, the port forwarding works best with the time capsule, Xbox Live, and Xbox One. And I made one last change, which is resetting the cache on my Xbox. Now what that's going to do is that's going to clear the optimizations your Xbox has made for any other settings that you've had and that cache is created while you play so you know if you had poor settings before your Xbox is going to adjust its cache in order to accommodate those settings by resetting your cache you're going to accommodate the new settings uh, that you've made while you play and you're going to get the best performance that you can out of ha Halo Master Chief Collection, Destiny and other Xbox Live games that's all I have to say today. Please view the rest of my YouTube videos if you want more information on networking, technology tips, and tricks. You can also view my blog at trialsandtribulationstech.blogspot.com.